Bismillah alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa man tabi'ahum bi ikhsani ila yawmidin Allahumma la sahla illa ma ja'atahu sahla wa anta taj'alu khazma idha shita sahla Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh All praise due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Lord of the heavens and earth is no one worthy of worship in truth except Allah and all praise and salutations be upon Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and all those who follow him up until the end of times um, so last week we uh, went through the fourth principle um, of Sheikh Muhammad Abdul Wahab from amongst the six principles that we are doing and the fourth principle just as a review and the recap um, to our listeners and those in, the, in attendance is the fourth principle was about knowledge the grandeur of knowledge what knowledge necessitates, you know, call Allah, call a Rasul, call a Sahaba. Now to derive knowledge, now to adorn yourself with knowledge. Now knowledge comes to your aid in terms of loneliness, in terms of despair, in terms of your salvation and training the path towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Our knowledge will aid you in this life and the year after. And knowledge basically um, adorns you with bliss and happiness and success. And we also spoke about you know, the deviation of those who acclaim knowledge, who ascribe to knowledge, but they're not from them. You know, those people that assume roles, but they're not able to fulfill their particular roles, you know. In terms of utilizing Quran ayat out of context, Quran, uh, a hadith of the Prophet وسلم, out of context, you know, a misrepresentation of those uh, sacred texts, you know, and the people of innovation, those people that have mis misconstrued and displace these sorts of, you know, uh, guidelines in terms of deriving knowledge and implementing knowledge. They make made big blunders with regards to that, and they made errors uh, in terms of the deriving and establishing proofs uh, to the common folk. And we also said upon us, those that Allah Subhanahu has guided, you know, that have you know little knowledge or minuscule knowledge, and have uh, uh, insight. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has enlightened us in terms of uh, the sunnah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sallam, the guidance of the companions, radiallahu anhum ajma'in, that we call to that which we know of. And we uphold that upon insight. And when we speak, we speak in a polite and kind manner, and we speak with substantial proofs, definitive <coughs> proofs and evidences. And we put things in their appropriate places, and we don't call to misguidance, and we don't call to innovations. And if we see and witness that, then we eradicate that and we embrace the person and we guide them to that which is right. So that was the fourth principle. Inshallah, we'll uh, proceed to the fourth principle of uh, the book uh, of Sheikh Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahab, the Shah of Sheikh Fuzan, Hafizullah Ta'ala. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Asl al-Khamis, Bayan Allah Ta'ala, Awliya Allah, Mutashabihina Bihim. Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, the Sheikh basically brings forth who are the allies, the awliya, right? the uh, friends of Allah, and the differentiation between the friends of Shaitan. Kala Sheikh, Rahmullah Ta'ala, Bayan Allah Subhanahu Awliya Allah, wa tafriku Bayanahum wa Bayanah Mutashabihina Bihim, wa man aadai la al munafiqin al fujjar. The Sheikh puts forth the clarification with regards to who the friends of Allah are and a separation between the friends of shaitan and those who resemble the awliya of Allah who wish to resemble them but they're not from them right like the munafiqin the hypocrites like the fujjar transgressors we have fi hadha al ayat min surah al ali imran wa hiya qawlu ta'ala kul in kuntum tuhibbun Allah fattabi'uni yuhibbukum Allah say you love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then follow me, Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala love you. Wa yakhfir lakum the nubakum. And Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala will forgive your sins. Just the mere fact that you are following the injunctions of Allah by, by obeying me, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Wa ayatul fi surat al-ma'idah. Wa yakalu ta'ala. Ya ayu al-ladhina amanu. May yaratat minkum an dinihi. Fasawfi ya'ti allahu bikawmin yuhibbuhum wa yuhibbunahu. Oh, you believe. Do not turn your backs on the deen of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala therefore bring a people that he loves and they will love him. Wa ayatu fi 
Surat Yunus wa yaqulu ta'ala ala inna awliya Allah la khawfun alayhim wa la hum yahzanun alladhina amanu wa kanu yattaqun uh, ayah in surah Yunus where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says ala inna awliya verily the friends of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala la khawfun they do not fear there's not grief upon them alayhim wa la hum yahzanun they do not despair or they not yeah they do not have grief alladhina amanu wa kanu yattaqun the description of them is that they believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they uh, fulfill the rights of Allah subhanahu wa by obeying his commandments and staying away from his provisions. Then the Sheikh uh, continues and this uh, last passage that he mentions is these people that have basically assumed these titles and have adorned themselves with these titles to mislead the masses. The Wali of Allah who the friends of Allah. So the Sheikh will clarify now what happened in today's time. In his time, and obviously that is rampant and rife in our time, these people have assumed the roles of wali, and you know, saints, and righteous people, and you know, incorrectly. Amr in the Always mention the scrolls in the fourth, second principle, third principle as well. Then, when ignorance occurred, many other people that assume knowledge, wa anno, mean hudat and halq, wa khufad sharia, those people that are supposed to be uh, guidance for the creation and to preserve the legislation of Allah SWT, the deen. Ila anna awliya la buddha fim bin tarq al rasul. Then these people that assume knowledge, they have a purpose to fulfill in terms of preserving the sharia. Then they've assumed the role of wali. But look at the description that the Sheikh gives. He says, then it became so, so much so, with the ignorance that they engulfed in, La Buddha fi min tarqit tiba Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Then they have abandoned and forsaken the following of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Wa man tabi'ahum fa laysa minum. And whoever follows the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in their perspective and in their understanding is not considered a wali. If you follow Allah's messenger, whoever follows Allah's messenger is not considered a, a wali, a friend of Allah subhanahu wa sallam. Walabud min tarqil jihad, and it is incumbent, according to them, according to these people, to abandon jihad. You know, striving the path of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. That is a fundamental, you know, pillar of this religion. That uh, that Allah's religion can reign supreme and triumph. Faman jahada falaysa minum. Whoever fulfills this pillar of jihad, then he is not considered a wali. Walabud min tarqil iman wa taqwa. Faman taada bil iman wa taqwa falaysa minum. And for them, a, requ a requisite for these people to be, uh, you know, categorized as a wali is that you must abandon iman, whatever iman associated with, in terms of speech and actions, and uh, your belief that it in the heart, and your taqwa, your, your religious upkeep, and your obligations of uh, uh, of Allah you must abandon that. فَمَنْ تَعَادَ بِالْإِمَانُ وَالتَّقْوَى فَلَيْسَ مِنْهُمْ Whoever tries to uphold iman and taqwa, according to them, is not considered a wali. And then the Sheikh, he laments and he implores, he says, Ya Rabbana, O our Lord, Nas aluk al-afwa, we seek uh, yani, uh, salvation, al-afwa, or almost like to, um, for aid. Well, afia, inna ka samiyutu'a. You, O Allah, are the one who the hero of all invocations and du'as. So, Sheikh Fazal, uh, Hafizullah Ta'ala will clarify this and we will go through this very quick because this is not a big uh, particular chapter so uh, we'll go through um, this particular uh, chapter now he says Naam Yes Had al-Asl Al-Deem Wa wa tafriq Bain al-Awliya Allah wa awliya shaitan This is a differentiation between the friends of Allah and the friends of shaitan Li'anna ahlul badin saru yam those people that have characteristics of evil, treachery, you know, innovation, shirk, kufr, they have all this in the composition. They the ones that acclaim this title of wali. Watch. So much so that this matter of who the wali is is confused. People are they, they confuse and run up. Who, the, who, who's the friend of Allah? 
ولذلك صنف شيخ الاسلام ابن تيميه كتابا نافعا مفيدا سماه فرقان بين اولياء الرحمن واولياء الشيطان for this reason ibn taymiyyah rahimahullah ta'ala has authored the book and he captured the book and he titled the book the allies the allies of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the allies of shaitan qala allah ta'ala ala inna awliya allah la khawfun alayhim wa la hum yahzanun fi the things of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala they do not fear nor do they grieve thumma bayanahum bi qawl alladhina amanu wa kanu yattaqun so the characteristics of a wali Characteristics of freedom, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, encapsulated in this ayat is those people that believe. What is belief? Belief is uh, your your creed, your aqidah, in terms of how you fulfill the obligations of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. How do you the elements of love, fear, hope? These are all elements embedded in you, so settled in your heart, and then it is emanated on your expressions. I love Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. I believe in Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. Fulfill all his obligations, and then the outward manifestation, like your salah, like your hajj, like your zakah, all outward forms of of al al iman, your belief in Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. That's all part of it, and then, yani the actions in terms of that fulfillment is the outward, uh, you know, apparent display of that uh, particular ritual. That's why Ibn Taymiyyah, Rahim Allah Taala, says, uh, "Ibada is ismun jamid." لكل ما يحب الله ويرضاه من أقوال والأفعال الظاهرة والباطنة. He says, "Ibada is a collective noun that comprises of everything that Allah loves, of expression, statements, and actions. Vaira, you know, apparent, like we said, the apparent rituals are like salah, hajj, zakah. That's apparent. What vaira is what you reliance of Allah, atawakul, inaba, repentance." Al istiana seeking refuge of Allah. That is all things that have to do with the heart. He says, Sheikh Fazal says, How la humul awliya? These are the friends of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. They have these characteristics. Jamu bain al iman or bain al taqwa. They gather between iman and between taqwa. They first have that particular elements settle on the heart, and then they fulfill all that which Allah Subhanahu wa Taala made incumbent upon them. Bain bain al ilm nafi wa amal salih. Between uh, right, between uh, sound knowledge, you know, call Allah, call a Rasul, you know, fulfillment of the actions according to the blueprints of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam upon correct intent, correct uh, uh, near and upon the blueprints and guidance of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in his gestures, his guidelines, in any form of worship, you worship Allah in that particular manner, and that's how you attain a amal salih or qabul, accepted actions by Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. How na humul awliya? Less than awliya Allah, man kharaj ala sharia Allah wa ghayra din Allah. The wali is not the one who goes out of the legislation of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, who changes or tempers the religion of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. Wa du'a ila ibadat al kubur, and we mention this from the onset of this book. Not those people that call upon the inhabitants of the grave. Well, adrika, you know, Muslims and graves. What do you do there? You know, what do people do there? They seek yaab, they seek deliverance, you know, and this is another thing. The characteristics of a wali, right? He must be free from shirk. Inna Allah la yaqfiru ayu shirku bihi wa yaqfiru ma duna dali kalima yasha. Free from bid'ah, man akhtatha fi amrina adam alaysa minu fawrad. We even reduces anything that is not part of it will be rejected. Mar dun an sahi bihi, right? There's two actions that you shall have already. Shirk not accepted. Innovation, you know, gone is rejected. Right? Then you still at the graves. You still at the graves. What are you doing there at the graves? Right? The person is righteous. We said this from the onset of this book. Whatever you know, they said and they heard. We may Allah forgive them. May Allah have mercy on them. We don't fall in the same errors that they did. They didn't have perhaps ample knowledge. Let them go forth. They sent forth. We're not here to curse the dead, but we don't revere them. We don't apportion anything that Allah Subhanahu wa Taala that is close for Allah to them. Right? That is our standpoint from the Sunnah of Allah's Messenger. So you go to the graves. What do you do at the graves? Call on the dead. You make ziyara, whatever. You know, you can do that from your own. No, make dua for them. But you go there with a belief that they can grant you deliverance. They can grant you aid. The person that calls directly upon Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, he's sincere. You know, submissive, and he comes with the bundles of humility. So when I was reading somewhere, and someone comes, you know, and he erects 
the inhabitant of the grave and they ask the inhabitant of the grave to ask Allah and he says I and he puts a close here I don't believe they can help this is shirk this is shirk so I read something what's the difference between that two the one who calls alone on Allah sincere humble abundance of humility reveres Allah SWT is free from shirk and the one who erects someone the inhabitant in the grave he says he's most righteous he's that he got the high status of Allah right so what's the difference if this person believe if this person believe even if he don't, he don't need to believe the mere fact that you have already inserted someone right in the worship the exclusive for Allah SWT is already shirk now we ask okay so what's the difference if I call upon Allah alone sincerely you know with humble submissiveness you know and uh, I implore Allah SWT and beseech Allah and I'm broken and meek, right? Is my dua of a lesser stature than yours? Is my dua of a lesser stature than yours? So why do you do that? Is that dead person going to enhance your dua? Is it going to elevate your dua? If you say no, then what's the use calling upon the dead? Why do you insert or interpolate this person with the worship that is exclusive for Allah SWT? And you will see that there's people that don't have logic. Well, why they don't have intellect too? To get themselves out of this. So coming back, the characteristics of a wali is free from shirk, free from innovation. Allah's Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam curse the Yahud and Nasara, the Jews and the Christians, because they took the the places, the the graves of the Ambiya as places of worship. What do these people do? Tarim Nabihud, you know, seeking barakah from it. That's all shirk. Actions of shirk. You know, that's not legislated. All abominable things. If you say it's not shirk, then it's a gateway to shirk. It's a gateway to all the abominable and detestable things. So this is what they do. This is all the characteristics that's entailed in them. But they are wali of Allah. All the things that Allah is displeased with, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this person come and they say, no, I'm wali of Allah. Subhanallah. And then they see intercession. Shifa'ah, istighatha, tawasu. The person makes shirk with Allah. He comes with abandonment of sins. Uh, you know, he's upon innovation. And he still plows the dead person. And he thinks Allah SWT will answer him and help him. How, 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 how shameful is this? How detestable, ugly is this? And yet these people assume the role of Wali. And that's why Sheikh Fazan, he says, Man kharaj ala shara wa ghayra deen ala is wa dua ila ibadu al-kubur wa al-adrikha. This is a friend of shaitan because they have all the characteristics that shaitan basically uh, uh, advocates for. What is a wali? Rather, sahir, you know, a magician. Well, kahin, suicidal. Well, khurafi, someone that comes, uh, you know, is delusional. Allah, the youth, really, nas, muharika, sukriya. The person that enchants people, you know, with his illusions, you know, magic, suicidal, the one that can predict. You know, you know, you see this, 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 these sorts of people, they call them what? Quacks. Dr. Musa, Dr. Arun from Cambodia, Gambia, Los Lava. Those people have, those people have characteristics of this, of shirk, of kufr. Prophet said, Ishtanibu sabam nubikot. Stay away from the seven destructive sins. One shirk billah. Wa qatil nas allati kharamullah illa bilhaq. And to, not to kill someone except from a legisl legislated means, meaning like if a person commits zina or a person, you know, whatever, and is entitled to the corporal punishment, the hudud, then you establish a punishment in the junctions of the Quran. And then, sikhr, magic, Prophet said that the seven destructive sins, stay away from the seven. These people, the wali, has characteristics of that. Yudhirili nas maharik sukhriya, wa yakul hadha karamat. This is, what is karama? Uh, you know, um, how do I translate the karama? As a, like a, how do I translate the karama now? Meaning like something uh, illusional, like uh, of, of a mystical, like a miracle. Why you call Allah karama? Why you feel hakikati muharika shaitan? This is only illusions of shaitan. Wa muhabbati la hiya a'adham anwa ibadah. The love of Allah SWT is the most loftiest of the types of worship of Allah SWT. Wa alamatul muhib, wa alamatul muhabbatillah itibarasu. 
from the signs and hallmarks of loving Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is to follow and to submit yourself to the Prophet in terms of his guidance. Whatever he calls to, you call to. Whatever he forewarns and prohibits you from, stay away, stay far aloof from. Because then you are going to defy his guidance. فَالَّذِي لَا يَتَّبِي رَسُولُ لَيْسَ وَلِيُ اللَّهِ Whoever does not follow the Prophet he is not considered a friend of Allah. وَلَا يُحِبُ اللَّهِ And Allah does not love him. Allah does not love the person that doesn't follow his message صلى الله عليه وسلم. وَهَوْلَى مُخَرِّفِينَ يَقُولُونَ Those people, you know, the demons, they will say لَا يَكُونْ وَلِيًّا إِلَّا إِذَا خَارِجَ أَنْ تَعْتِي رَسُولُ You cannot be a wali except if you go out of the guidance of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم. That's again also a great fallacy and a great enormity, a great sin. فَهُمْ إِنْدَوْمْ وِلَيَدِي فِي خُرُوجْ أَنْ سُنَةِ رَسُولُ وَالْإِتِمَادْ عَلَى خُرَفَاتُ الْبِدَعِ For them, Wilaya, meaning the freedom of Allah SWT and how to adorn yourself with us is to be away from the Prophet SWT's guide, away from the Prophet SWT's guidance, right? Demand and to rely and to depend upon khurafat, superstition, illusions and innovations, you know, newly introduced novelties and misguidance. Hadi here, wilaya to indom, and this is considered wilaya, you know, high lofty status, you know, freedom of Allah according to them, according to the Stevens. هم يقولون they say نحن نعبد الله نحن نعبد الله لأننا نحبه we worship Allah سبحانه وتعالى because we love Allah لا نعبده خوفا we do not worship Allah سبحانه at the fear of him من النار at the fear of him and they are fire ولا تمن ولا تم أن في جنة and we do not worship Allah سبحانه وتعالى for the delights of paradise what is that why must we why must we fear Allah سبحانه وتعالى we don't worship Allah out of you know, out of fear, we treat this punishment. We love Allah SWT, the mere fact we love and we, we ascribe this love, you know, for Allah and we show our divine, you know, forms of love, that's sufficient for us. Listen to Sheikh Wazan's clarification. We worship Allah because we love Him. Now, Ibn Qaymah Rahim Allah Ta'ala says, He says, love is like this and He gives a parable of a bird. The head is love. The wing, one wing is hope, the other wing is fear. He says if the head is damaged, right? If the head is damaged, the head is off, the bird will die, right? Because it's dysfunctional, it will fall down. Either that, or if one of the wings are damaged, right? The bird is also susceptible to, to crash or to fall down. And then the bird will be a form of Yani, uh, you know, like food for the prey. It will be vulnerable for prey. So Ibn Qayyim, Rahimah Ta'ala says, this is the embodiment of how we should worship Allah Subhanahu Wa Upon love for Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, fearing His punishment and hoping in His mercy. And this is also in conjunction with the ayah of when Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala addressed Nabi Zakariya, He says, Inna mkanu yusari'una fil khayrat wa yada'una na raghabaw wa raghaba wa kanu lana khashin. He says, إِنَّهُمْ كَانُوا يُسَعِرُونَ فِي خَيْرَاتِ They used to hasten towards us. They used to implore and beseech us with hope. With hope and fear. They used to hope and long for us and fear, you know, our punishment and our retribution. وَكَانُوا لَنَا خَاشِئِنَ They were submissive, you know, they were meek and they were sincere towards Allah SWT. So what is I establishing? إِنَّهُمْ كَانُوا يُسَعِرُونَ فِي الْخَيْرَاتِ وَيَدَعُونَنَا رَغَبًا وَرَحَبًا وَكَانُوا لَنَا خَاشِنًا Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala establishes on this deviance. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uproot them. This ayah is of Nabi Zakaria alayhi salam. He used to call Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala hoping for the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Fearing Allah's punishment, the dread of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And they were submissive. This is the methodology of prophets. And this is how you worship Allah. Ibn Taymiyyah rahim Allah ta'ala says, Whoever worships Allah only out of love, then he's a zindik, a heretic. He's a foolish, clumsy person, he's a heretic. Whoever worships Allah SWT out of fear, then he's a haruri, he's a khariji, he's a, some sort of deviant group. Why? Because they fear if you do any sort of, you know, irritable ma'asi, any forms of sin, then due to that sin, walk out of that sin, you're out of the fall. You expel from the fall. Why? Because 
the one that you should fulfill your obligations within Allah. So we in San, you know, we are prone to error, right? We are prone to error, and we, we you know, we all have sins and shortcomings. That's what the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said. Kullu ibn Adam khata. All other sins of Adam, create, uh, you know, make sense, man. And the best of sinners are those who repent, right? So the this group, the Haru Riya, they deem whoever makes sins or fall into sins, then he's outside the pearl of Al Islam. So this is a divin opinion. This is the, uh, the opinion of Ahlu Sunnah, Ahlu Hadith, Ahlu Ahlu. And then the last opinion is the Murja. Whoever worships Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala out of, out of, out of uh, hope, just hoping, you know, hoping. You know, almost like a freebie. You know, I believe in Allah. You know, we have the, a lot of these people here in Cape Town. Subhanahu wa Allah save us. The Murjia, they who say we believe, like the you know the we give an apt example, like the lady, or, you know, a female. We're just putting for the example. You know, we're not here to evoke any, you know, um, argumentation. Like the lady who say, you know, why you speak about obligation of hijab? I believe, you know, hijab is in my heart. You know, we say that is wrong. You know. If you really love Allah SWT and you really want to fulfill the obligation, then that outward apparel must be upon you. You must display that. And that goes for anything. You know, if you say something, and that's why the, the Prophet was so stern in warning against the characteristics of the hypocrites. The hypocrites, the four characteristics, when he lies and when he speaks, he, you know, he lies. When he trusts with something, breaches trust. When he's, uh, uh, what's the other one? When he's promised something. He's, you know, with, if he argues, and he's, he's very, how can I say, this genuine and he's he abrupt. So these are all characteristics of the hypocrite. So, uh, uh, yani, uh, the Murja, coming back to that uh, divine group, which is also not from the opinions of Ahl Sunnah, Ahl Hadith, they believe that if you just say expressions, they're sufficient. But the, the, the Quran is replete, it's filled with that. Where Allah SWT says, Ya Yuladina Amanu. Ya ayu aladina amanu. Oh, you believe? Ya ayu aladina amanu wa amilu salihat. Ya ayu aladina amanu wa amilu salihat. Oh, you believe and do righteous deeds. Wa amilu salihat. You can't just believe. Just make expressions. You know? Same like sana. You can't just go through the, the mere modes of, you know, the postures and that. You must know what that necessitates. That posture. What to say there. How to say. Are you upon the blueprint of Prophet Sallallahu if you go through your uh, form of rituals like that, then there's no value in it. And that's why another clarification of the importance of, uh, you know, of, of worship and why we stress and emphasize this is the example of the Prophet when they came to Ramadan. Another ritual, you know, that we just fulfilled now a few months back. He says, you know, how many are people fast? How many are people fast, but they derive nothing from the fast except hunger? How many are people stand in prayer? And derive nothing from the prayer except sleeplessness. The sharf of that hadith is the element of khashia, the revenge for Allah. Sincerity in that action. Humility in that action. The more fortified you are, the more, the more that deed is accepted with Allah SWT. And that's why we mustn't be taken aback. We do righteous deeds. We must also fear the quality of our deeds. You know, sometimes we do deeds sincerely signifies of Allah upon the blueprints of the Prophet but that deeds are like meager. It's weak, man. You know, weak. It's, it's there's no value, man. There's lots of discrepancies in it. But we move on, inshallah. And then the Sheikh Al Fuzan, Khafidullah Taala says, "For you call him to keep born out Allah Tariqat Iman. You love Allah upon whose guidance and whose methodology? How to keep born Allah Tariqat Rasul? Do you love Allah Subhan upon the guidance of the Prophet or Allah Tariqat Ghairi or upon?" Other tariqa, other guidance, and how much tariqas are there? Sahra, Windy, Naksha, Bandi, Ati, Jane, all of them have elements of events in them, and misguidance, and kufr, and shirk, you know, and all of them, they are all mock of all these people of Sophia, and we say this aloud, and I take responsibility and ownership of what to say on this thing, and people can disseminate it. All the Sufi groups, they have this all mock of revering graves, they have the sickness, they can't progress. You know, our children need to progress and go out there and be successful and be intelligent, but they regress. They can, these people go backwards, you know. You, you're so fixated and you're so infatuated with the graves. These people are dead, they passed on already. Move on, study, go to another book. 
completed, complete that book, study a different discipline, study a different science. You focus on graves, 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 you know. You can spend all your time revering, tri paying tribute and homage to these people. These people are unaware of what you're doing. You know, there's no reward for you. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is pleased with you. But they focus on, you know, generation upon a generation. SubhanAllah, it's over and over and you keep, the more you hear about this, the more it makes you, it makes you sick, you know. Because these stuff are sprout forth in the community. Once you speak about the hadith, the people say, oh, we don't know about that. Why? Because the innovation has taken its form. Shirk has taken its form in the guise of Tawheed. Innovation has taken its form in the, in the guise of, of, of the Sunnah of the Prophet And this is false. All due to these people. They say the Wahhabis are here, you know, they just want to surround people, they want to do this, they want to misguide people, right? But what do you do? What do these people do? They just call to sins, in the books a lot of transgressions, all the abominable things that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and it is, they promote and advocate. They promote and advocate. Yeah, we come, we say, Barakallah Fikum, don't do this. You know, it's now the 20th year you're doing this, now the 60th year. When are you going to learn? You know, when are you going to grow out of the sickness of worshipping graves, calling upon the dead, <coughs> tampering with a hadith, misplacing this information? Do not sin above that, man. Go forward. You know, once you, you do things which Allah SWT is pleased with, then we can progress and we can move forward with, you know, forward with life. And then Shifu Zahali says, Hadi sifat al-awliya anum yuhibbun Allah, yuhibbun Allah. He says, these characteristics, anum yuhibbun Allah, yuhibbun Allah. These are characteristics that Allah loves and these are also characteristics that uh, these people love Allah with, meaning like the awliya. Adhillatil ala al-mu'minin, they are Adhillatil mu'minin, they are, you know, courteous with regards to the mu'minin. Aizzatil ala al-kafirin, and they are harsh, and they detest the disbelievers. Yujayiruna fi sabilillah, they strive hard in jihad. Walayil khafuna lawmat al-ayim, dalik fadullah yuti maisha, and they do not fear, they reproach or blame all the believers. The Yashif Fuzani says, Hadi arba sifat, ya sifat al-awliya, wa amma alladhina ya'muruna, bi ba'di ghayri illa, yaduuna, Man fil kubur wal amwat wal adirha wa sammun al al khawarik al shaitan al karamat min Allah. He says that um, as for those people that call and advocate to worshipping other than Allah, calling upon other than Allah, calling upon the inhabitants of the grave and the dead, wal adirha, the Muslims and the built up structures with the Prophet cursed, wa sammun al khawarik al shaitan, khawarik al shaitan al karamat min Allah. These are all illusions of the shaitan, this displays of illusion and in charge of the shaitan and these people, they categorize this as karamat, mean Allah. They say, this is from Allah, this is miracles from Allah. Father Sifat Allah. this is characteristics of the enemies of Allah SWT. If you min Sifat Al-Uliya, Al-Ula fi Surat Al-Ala Imran, that's Kul In Kuntu Kibbun Allah, Well, Ayat Al-Thani fi Surat Al-Ma'idah, and that is Ya ayu aladina amna mayyar tan minkum andini ila akhir ayah wa thalitha fi surat yunus fi ya sifat al-awliya ala ina awliya ala khufun alimu itat ayah ila akhiri he says man ittasafa biha fa huwa wali Allah he says whoever adorn yourself with these characteristics all of these three ayahs if you basically encompass all of that then you have the characteristics of friend of Allah wa man ittasafa bidditiha fa huwa wali shaitan whoever have the characteristics of other than that mentioned in this then you have the characteristics of shaitan you know al kufr things that Allah dislike abominations all that stuff is you know matters that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is pleased with ida kharaja an sharia ida kharaja if you leave the legislation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala you call in the home ada arif wasal ila Allah ليس بحاجة إلى اتباع رسول يأخذ أن أن الله مباشرة. فهي سيد those people, those people that you know ascribe to being a friend of Allah سبحانه وتعالى that have all the demons and misguidance. They say إذا خرج عن شريعة if you go outside, you know for them the legislation of Allah following the Prophet is like ordinary things, man. You mustn't be ordinary. That's why the Sufis have this close esoteric knowledge. You don't know. You people don't know. Only us and our ilk. And our cronies, we we only uh, 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 um, acquainted with subject knowledge. So the stuff that Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, you know, the injunctions of Allah and what Allah Subhanahu wa Taala us with, right? 
That is, uh, the, no one can comprehend that, only them, right? Hidden knowledge, or secret knowledge. All the other knowledge is all like, you know, mere, you know, like illusions or mere like ordinary stuff. That's like petty things, man. Right, so they say they have uh, uh, access to hidden knowledge. And this is what some of the Sufi are saying. Yaqulun, they say, Aantum ta'akhuduna dinakum. They say, this is what they say. Aantum, they're saying to us, right? People that believe in, you know, Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the guidance and the companions. Aantum ta'akhuduna dinakum anmayt anilmayt. You take knowledge from dead people, uh, transferable over to dead people, you know, yani bil asanid, you know, you study by this one, you study by that one, asanid, you know, so by change of narrations, which is also part of warm up of Ahlusuna, people of Hadith, and do not be for the change, people to say, say whatever they wish, you know, so verification and being uh, diligent on verifying information is a warm up of Ahlusuna, you know, it's not something that you know, we are take lightly and you know to fool around with so this is what the people of sufia say antum ta'khuduna dinakum an mayt an al mayt yani bil asanid wa nahnu na'khud dinana an hay alladhi la we take knowledge we take knowledge our religion and hay from allah allah is al hay la yamut allah is loving you know it doesn't die wa yas amun annahu ya'khuduna an illa mubashirata these people claim that they take knowledge directly from allah the Sufis, they, they claim to take knowledge directly from Allah, right? How does that work? So they, they how does this phenomenon work? So what we are reading, we cannot comprehend. We are demoted, we don't understand. They are more intelligent than us. Yo, like how? How does this mechanism work? So this is what Shifu Zahra saying, that these people that treat this path, they have this misguidance, it's like inconceivable. You cannot, you, you cannot fathom the, the misguidance or the, the level of lowliness of these people. SubhanAllah, it's amazing. Whoever takes from Allah's Messenger, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, is not considered a wali. So there is no friend of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala with him, illa man and ta'ati rasul. Except that you go outside the guidance of the Prophet. And this is true, man. This is true. We, we say to Sheikh Fazan, Jazakallah Sheikh, Alama Sheikh Fazan, Khafil Allah Ta'ala. Your statement is true. Because the people that upon misguidance, all of the Sufis, they don't follow the Sunnah. And my father was sitting here, Khafil Allah Ta'ala, may Allah preserve him. We used to say this years back, and my companions here as well. You will see these people, they focus on what? Eat to the right hand, don't eat to the left hand. Put on your right shoe and don't put on your left shoe. They quote things that is generalities. But when it comes to creed, creed, you believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah's descriptions, you know, for warning against that things that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for warning against. Being upon the guidance of, you know, his primary purpose, why Allah sent him to dispatch him, is to, you know, to clarify to creed, you know, in all his forms and manifestations, you never see them teach this. Another thing as well is, when it comes to calling the people to Al-Islam, you know, calling the people to Al-Islam, you know, uh, having this kiosk. Who is at the forefront of this? People of hadith. Maybe people that have maybe shortcomings here and there. But you never, I've never seen a Sufi. Have you ever seen a Sufi, uh, you know, call, uh, or any faction of Sufism call to, you know, Al-Islam, Christianity? Or I've never seen that. Well, I've, ne I've never seen a Sufi write to another Sufi, I'm a Tijani. I'm ready to use a Shadilia. you making shirk in your book. That is inappropriate. That eye is misplaced. Have you ever seen something like that? Well, I've seen I take a custom on this on this mic. I've never seen in my years of study a Sufi write to another Sufi to say, look here, that, that what you're doing is innovation. I'm a Shadali Tariqa, I'm writing you as a Tijani. You never see them because a kufr milatu wahida. Disbelief and innovations and corruptness is of one. They're all the same. They're all the same. For us, you make an error now, I'll write to you. I write to the brothers, look here, uh, you said this, Prophet Sallallahu said this, you must quote that companion, Imam Shafi didn't say that, he said that in, a, in, a, in a, another, another statement, this is the context, context you have misplaced. What do you see? I write when it's in the open. You can see transparency, you can see our blueprints, you can see where we derive our knowledge from, but where do you see these people speaking about, uh, uh, you know, 
for mm. warning against the evil and the, the misguidance, you will never see them. Never see a Tijani right in Nakshabandi. A Qadiri say to a Tijani, you know what? Uh, a hadith of Allah fi sama and their uh, uh, 60 companions, you know, agree to this. Is each ma on that unanimous agreement? You see something wrong, it's always everywhere. Do you see them writing against that? I've never come across it. Why? Because they don't deem this important. Right? They deem these things futile. And they busy themselves with mundane things. We're not saying that stuff is imp- not important. Eating with the right hand, you know, going to the machine, making to our. That is stuff that our, like our, 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 our you know, elderly people that send forth this beacons of goodness, our parents raise us up you know cultivates up on eating with the right hand the sunnah of all those messenger and sometimes they didn't have enough knowledge to guide us in tawheed the children came and they sent forth this Allah granted enlightenment and now we make the path open to those who we should study we clarify truth from falsehood but coming back to Sheikh Fazan, you see that none of these people that append and ascribe themselves to you know uh, uh, or call themselves a wali of Allah none of them Go to Tawheed. I've never seen that. All of them are engulfed in superstition, misguidance, bogus, you know, uh, all futile things, man. Futile things. All things that Allah sentient, about the Prophet sentient, they are engulfed in. And this is. Hala. Sorry. This is. Waman yakhud an rasul. فَلَيْسَ مِنَ الْأَوْلِيَاءِ إِنْدَهُمْ فَلَا يَكُنْ وَلِيًا إِنْدَهُمْ إِلَّا مَنْ خَرْجَ أَنْ تَعْتِ رَسُولُ وَلَا يَسِيرُ وَلِيَ الآن في أرفا كثير من المتأخرين إلا من بني على قبر والكبة والقبر كبة أو ماشين He says and the matter has reached Sheikh Wazan is saying the matter has reached in the time of Sheikh Muhammad Wahab and it's arrived in the rampant out time right that he, these sorts of characteristics and those people that assume knowledge, Kathiri Minal Mutakhirin, in the latter generation, the times now, Al Ana, Man Bunya Allah Kabar, wherever, you know, those people that build over the graves, the Eric Muslims, or a dome over the graves, right? Or a masjid even, a structure over their particular graves. Ammal Madfun Alladi Dafano Allah Sunnah, Alladi Lam Yuda Allah Kabar, Shayun, Fawa Indam Laysa Bilwali. He says, those people that you bury according to the guidance of the Prophet you know those people that you, we, we bury our Muslim men according to the guidance of the Prophet that they have no dome that they have no masjid they no, have no uh, you know abominable things no pl- uh, plastering no flowers all that thing that Prophet said all of that all that characteristics put the person now you say the prescribe uh, 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 idea that the Prophet has expressed you guide the person in the correct kafa, the correct sequence. There's no dome, no structure, nothing like that. For this person, no one will recognize him. He's not considered a wali. By this description, he's not considered a wali by these people. A wali is someone that you must build a masjid over. You must build a dome. You must erect something. Now you are wali. What is that? That's Musari, yeah? Showing off ostentation, you know? And also... Th- <laughs> yeah, subhanAllah. And then he says, Thumma aidan indom al wali lahu zayun khas. Thumma aidan indom. With regards to this people, and we'll conclude now, inshallah. Thumma aidan indom al wali lahu zayun khas. They have specific characteristics, you know, certain attire that they wear. They have yalbis amama wa yalbis thoban khas. They have like imam specific, like the people of the Ba'alawi, they have this sandal. Right? And they have like the thobes, certain turbans. This is a description of them. Naksabandi have green turbans. That is their hallmark. We identify them by that. We identify them by that. You can't be a, a bar alawi if you don't have a big turban on it. The Shias are with a black turban. That's your hallmark. That's a description. There are Sheikh Uthaymin Rahim al Ta'ala. You know what you say about this Saudi thing with the stripes? He said, no man, this thing is just, it's just for a region. Nothing to do with Abdul Wahab or anything of that sort. It's just something that's in Saudi Arabia. But these people, this Ba'alwis and this Naqshabandis that wear the green to distinguish themselves as, you know, a particular sect, mm. right? 
This is the attire to identify themselves. We are Naksabandi. We are Qadri. You know, this is our night, the Thursday night. That is our location. That's what we do. This is our weird here, disseminated. This is who we are. This is our sifat. This is our attributes. So she for Zali says, in them our leaves in cross, they have specific characteristics. They are Yalbis Amama, we Yalbis Tauban Khasa, they have specific attire that identifies them. Yakul Ibn Kaim, this is what Ibn Kaim now, Ibn Kaim debunks and defutes these characteristics of the divan people. Laysa Uliya Allah Alamatun Yatamayus Biha. The true servant of Allah Spantana. The true servant of Allah does not have any sort of characteristics that distinguish himself. You can be a wali as Mr. Tindia. Ajibaka can be a wali. My father can be a wali. In his true sense. My mother can be a wali in the true sense. Guiding me, nurturing me, looking after me, expending the money on me, telling me this is right, this is wrong. You know, free from shirk, free from innovation, free from superstition. That's what my parents teach me in our enclosure of our household. He's considered a wali. Right? My mother's considered a wali. We here who follow the Sunnah, inshallah, we try to ascribe and to aspire to be that. Friends of Allah SWT, we wish to, to be uh, adorned with these characteristics. So Ibn Qayyim, he says, the true friends of Allah do not have any means or signs to distinguish himself, to say he's a wali. Bal yakun kasair nas mayarifun. He is like the normal ordinary person. Like the ordinary person, there's no way of distinguishing from you know the rest of, 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 of mankind. You won't you won't know who's who. You won't know who's who, you know. SubhanAllah. So Ibn Qayyim is saying there's no special characteristic to identify the friend of Allah SWT. And then he brings forth the hadith of the Prophet. This is amazing hadith, subhanallah. SubhanAllah. He says, Rupa Ashath Akbar. Many rupa ashaf akbar, many a disheveled, you know, untidy, you know, disorientated person comes like a beggar coming to your door. bil abwab, he is repulsed from the doors of people. If he has to take a custom by Allah SWT, Allah will surely accept his custom oath. I'm not saying this, the Prophet is saying this. Many a disheveled, untidy, disorientated person. Meaning there's no signs of grandeur. There's no signs of, you know, uh, I'm from affluent and, you know, this one is from uh, impoverished, destitute. Prophet is saying, many a people that look like that is repulsed from those. If we have to take an oath by Allah, Allah will surely come to his aid and take that. Allah accept his oath. The meek and another hadith to fortify this is where the uh, Prophet said, Verily, this ummah, this nation is aided by the du'afa. This nation is aided by the weak and the meek. Bi du'aihim wasilahim. By the invocations, the beseeching Allah, imploring Allah, and by the salah. You know, by the salah, the prayer. I was looking at one video, uh, uh, Sheikh uh, Anzi, I don't know if his name is Sheikh. Abdulaziz and Anzi, one video of him, he says, why, why did the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi speak uh, in conformity for them, for the poor and the impoverished people, you know, and we also make, we also make a stipulation on this, we're not referring to the poor, dissident uh, people out there that's in Kafu Shirk, they, they don't enter into that, people that are misguidance, if you don't know, you don't know, right, if you, if you, if you don't have knowledge, no problem, right? But if you're someone that's upon shirk and you're upon um, uh, misguidance and you're upon innovation, then you don't enter in this hadith, even if you're impoverished, even if you be poor. And wallahi, you know, this hadith, when I was, uh, was reading this hadith and watching a video of Sheikh Abdul Aziz al Anzi, is how many of us have encountered, this is the end of it, inshallah, uh, how many people have encountered people that are impoverished? of our brothers that we know of, you know, Khafidullah the Ra'is, Abu Khudayfa, you know, our brother, noble brother, Azuhad, you know, people that have characteristics of, of, of the Sunnah. When you're around him, you feel solace, you feel at ease. There's no distinguishing between who's, I mean, al-Aghniya, you know, al-Fuqara, 
is it's, it's easiness man and people upon rectitude and uh, many a times we take the matter for light you know whereby Allah subhanahu wa bestows upon us bounties but we don't utilize it in the obedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we squander a lot that's what the Prophet also said you know do not look to those who are above you lest you deny the blessings that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bestowed upon you you always want more the son of Adam always want more you know if he's given a value of gold you want more another value of gold no, so we must be content what Allah subhanahu wa portion us with. And also from the guidance of the Prophet and his companions is to seek out the poor man. To seek out the fuqara wal masakin because it's blessing in it. And make sure that it is. Shri Muhammad bin Adi, uh, he says, for Qadr, he says, for Qadr, there's two things that you need to imbibe and instill yourself in. The one is that hadith that I've mentioned now. It will bring ease to your heart. All your worries will, you know, vanquish to all depart from your ease. Do not look at those above you. Look at those below you. Lest you deny the bounds of Allah. And the other one is, you know, where he says that you will call upon Allah. You always call upon Allah. You call upon Allah. And Allah don't accept your supplication. You know, and then the, the Sahabi asked uh, the Prophet ﷺ, uh, Ya Rasulullah, I... I you know, I employed, like, uh, 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 sorry, the Prophet said that your dua will be accepted as long as you are not impatient and hasty. So the companion asked, Ya Rasulullah, what is being hasty? He said that is, you say, God the outu, God the outu, I implore Allah, I implore Allah, but Allah don't accept my dua. So Shaykh Muhammad bin Ali joined this too. He says, this is the characteristics of those people that have submitted to the Qadr of Allah. They will find contentness. Because the Prophet is giving you this glad tiding. He's giving, he's giving you something that you can have solace and peace of mind with. That you're employing Allah. It's not that Allah is not answering your dua. Allah is answering your dua. You're fulfilling the right requisites. You have a tint of mind. You're upon the blueprints. You're upon the guidance. Right? But Allah uh, 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 is just, uh, you know, keeping that particular dua for you in its appropriate time for you. This is once you have that and you feel the solace and the dialogue and the conversing with Allah. And also that, not looking at those above you, just being content. Since you, that will, like, all your, your, your sorrows and worries will vanish. You won't be entombed in worries and And we end of Sheikh Fazani says, Hari Sifat al Awliya Allah, Anum Lai, Yuth Harun, Anfusam. He says, These characteristics of the friends of Allah SWT, Anum Lai, Yuth Harun, Anfusam. He says, The true friends of Allah, they do not display any characteristics, man. I'm a wali, I'm a friend of Allah. You'll never see people as soon as say this, people hadith say, I'm a wali, come to me, you know, I'm on the right path, and all these things. They are diligent upon ikhtifa, being discreet, you know, due to being sincere for Allah and seeking Allah's face. When we mention this, in our conclusion is atawadu. Humility for Allah SWT's sake, while ikhtifa being discreet in concealment of our deeds, while adam of the war and not being apparent in terms of you know showing off and ostentation. And this is also in, in conformity to the hadith of the Prophet, sallam, you know, that we do not uh, do things to seek appraisals from people, for people to revere us. And then you see this with regards to knowledge also. When you study knowledge and acquire knowledge and take the path, don't study to compete with these scholars to sow over the you know the foolish and ignorant people so that they can avert the case towards you. Whoever does this, fanaru, 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 like he promises them for warning against the Alpha. Yeah. So this is our conclusion with the uh, fourth principle. Is there any other questions that the brothers have? A question that I can answer? Subhanakallah, alhamdulillah, ashhadu an la ilaha illa anta, astaghfiruka wa atubu ilaik.